can't go that way. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? I've just been to see the rectors, and they told me to get the train out of the station as quick as I can. Uh, I thought they'd say that. Rules are rules, and you gotta stick by them. Not a good idea to get into trouble with the university administration. Uh, absolutely. I've got enough worries as it is. What should I do then? Well, uh, I suggest you move your train. But it's like I say, the springs are unwound. Everyone seems to think it's my fault. The locomotive's engine might not work, it's true, but maybe there's some other way of moving the train. It's a possibility, I suppose. Uh, what were you thinking of, exactly? Uh, nothing. It's just an idea. Anyway, miss, you shouldn't hang around here. I have a job to do. Yes, sir. It seems that your superiors object to the presence of my train in the station. Not exactly easy going, are they? Uh, well, it's, it's not that they're difficult to please, but I find that the less I have to do with them, the better things are. Give a drift. Birds, more peaceful than employers. And respect for the regulations. Now that brings peace of mind. The sailors on the barge reckon they could help me tow my train out of here, but they're asking for money. You couldn't possibly help me out with a few dollars, could you? I would be very grateful. A miss? Really? I'm surprised at you. Asking for money from a total stranger. I mean, oh. Right. I need cash. I need it to get my train out of your station, because my train is getting in your way, disturbing your birds, and upsetting your bosses. Look, lady, I'm only a station master. I got my problems, and you got yours. Where might I find some forest sauvignon plants, please? No place around here, that's for sure. I don't know what you're talking about. That stuff's from the Amazon. <laughs> you know, for someone who knows nothing about the plant, you seem pretty well informed about which mysterious faraway country it comes from. Oh, I'm Amazon, Peru, Papua, New Guinea, it's all the same to me. Gotta go. Gotta work. Wait, don't go! You know what? I don't think he was being totally straight with me. Everything okay, Oscar? Yes, Kate Walker. I am awaiting your instructions. The university authorities want us to move the train out of their station. According to internal regulations, trains are designed for coming and going, not staying at platforms. They have a point, Kate Walker. However, our train is unique, and its clockwork mechanism has requirements that are beyond the station's rudimentary equipment. Hey, that's not their problem, Oscar. The problem is also beyond my mandate, Kate Walker. Whatever. Oscar, the sailors have agreed to tow the train, but they want to get paid for it. I suppose you have some petty cash on board to cover traveling costs? No, there is nothing like that. You will note, however, Kate Walker, 
that every effort has been made to ensure maximum passenger comfort. Okie dokie. I'll have to sort this one out by myself then. You don't know where I might find any Amazon Forest Sauvignon, do you? No, Kate Walker. Oscar, see you later, alligator. In a while, Kate Walker. Excuse me, Station Master, but I need you again. Can't you see I am very, very busy? Uh, no. I, well, well, I am. Very busy indeed. But, uh, okay, okay, I, I think I can give you a minute of my time. I'm looking for a kind of little juicy berry. You don't know where I could find some? Look, lady, the station doesn't have any Sauvignon berries, not even for Sauvignon. Funny you should mention it. That's exactly what I was looking for. Forest Sauvignon. Uh, Sauvignon, raspberries, red currants, they're all the same to me. And we don't grow none of them here. But you see, I have just read a very interesting book, which says that the rare Sauvignon berry is actually cultivated here, in the famous Baruchstadt University Avery itself. Well, if it's in a book, then... <laughs> don't believe everything you read, miss. I don't know why, but I don't think you're telling me the truth. What do you mean? I don't know. How should I know where to find your stupid grape? Go ask your professor, what's his name, Pons, the paleontologist. But you're the master of this station, so you should know better than anyone. Nobody tells me anything. I don't know. Go see the old guy with the fossils. I won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barrowstadt, miss. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. What is it you want to know, miss? You wouldn't know where the forest Sauvignon plants are kept in Bauerstadt, would you? Uh, why do you think there are Sauvignon plants here? I read about it in a book at the library. Uh, try going to see the station master. If such a shrub exists, he will have a better idea than anyone. It's actually he who sent me to you. I thought it a little strange, but he definitely said ask the paleontologist. You're the only one here, aren't you? Yes, yes indeed. What a strange way to behave. Well, I, um, I think he must have made a mistake, that's all. Nobody tells me anything here. Maybe you should ask the rectors. After all, they are in charge of the university. 
All right, thanks. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. Gentlemen, forgive me for disturbing you again, but I have a little problem. A little problem, a little problem. Everyone has little problems now, you know. They are kept to oneself, and they don't stop the world from turning. Nor trains from leaving stations. Could I possibly leave the train in the station for one more day? Out of the question! Trains should first stop, then subsequently leave. That is the rule. Perform the task we agreed on quickly, and we will pay you on completion. A deal is a deal. Are you sure you want me to mend your bandstand? You don't have some other service I could perform for you that is less complicated? It appears to me that you are in no position to make demands, miss. So please, keep up with the good work and good luck. Don't think for a moment that our university is falling apart around our ears. We pay close attention to its maintenance in both the moral and the physical sense of the word. It is currently the only repair work that deserves payment on completion. Are you sure there are no Amazon Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt? Because I have just interviewed the station master and the paleontologist and what they said really didn't convince me that there wasn't any here. We are quite definite on this point. There are no Sauvignon plants growing in Barockstadt. You see, miss, the Amazon forest Sauvignon is a rare shrub that requires very special conditions for growth. That's right. Conditions that are very hard to reproduce, believe you me. Difficult, but not impossible. Fortunately. Our garden has proved very successful. Your garden? So, there is a garden in Barakstadt? Oh, the garden. Well, if there was one, it would be only a little garden hidden behind the station. But our station master would be very proud of it. He would take very good care of it, too. Everything would grow marvelously if we were able to cultivate it at all, and it would be all down to his gardening prowess. And we would be proud as punch. And we wouldn't forget the role the paleontologist might play in this. What's the paleontologist got to do with it all? Without him and without his laboratory, how would we make the wine, do you think? And it would be good wine indeed, my dear colleagues, would it not? Oh, yes, a delightful balm to soothe away our long hours of toil and our heavy responsibilities. We would wait impatiently every year for the arrival of the year's produce. So, if I have understood you correctly, there are indeed Sauvignon plants in Barockstadt. They are cultivated in a garden behind the station, then turned into wine by the paleontologist's loving care. And finally, the pleasure of tasting is yours. If I'm not very much mistaken, gentlemen, you have a minor racket operating here. Miss, you do go jumping to some hasty conclusions. <laughs> we never said that. That's not what we said at all. Uh, uh, we, we were talking in the conditional. You know, with ifs and woulds. So, what would happen if I had such a hunch? Hmm, you would have to keep it to yourself, of course. Yes, if, if you would be so kind as to keep it a secret. <laughs> It would only be a small local concern, producing barely a few bottles every year. That's right. Nothing so grandiose as a business. Otherwise, we'd be liable to be fined. So, we can't count on your discretion, can't we? Don't worry. I have no intention at all of getting messed up in anything. 
If I were to need Sauvignon grapes, I could presumably find them in the garden, couldn't I? If Sauvignon were to be found here, it would doubtless be situated in the said location. But the station master would have to let you in. He would be the only one with the key. Yes, if that indeed was the case, that would be the correct procedure. Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. Do excuse me, Professor. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. What is it you want to know, miss? I have just had a very interesting little discussion with the rectors. It seems that you are perfectly aware of the existence of Sauvignon plants here in Barrackstadt. Apparently, you find them very tasty. Not at all. I never drink wine. I prefer to make it. Production to me is much more satisfying. So you don't deny? Why, uh, seeing as the rectors have let you into our little secret, I even converted part of the laboratory into a fermenting room for Amer's own Sauvignon wine production. <laughs> of course, I cannot produce wine in large quantities. We have to be discreet, uh, after all. And what about your students? Haven't they noticed anything? Well, you know how students are. After all, a chemical reaction is still a chemical reaction, even when grapes are involved. And malolactic fermentation takes time. Sometimes strange odors begin to waft through the corridors. Then I just burn a little sulfur. Incredible. Totally incredible. You are really something, Professor Pons. Really something. Hmm. I'm not sure whether I should take that as a compliment. I would have loved to study at a university like this. No age is too old to start learning, my dear. Maybe, but you know, the eternal student and all. You prefer being an eternal lawyer? I have more important things to deal with. Live problems, not things that died millions of years ago. Everyone has their own priorities, my child. Please do excuse my persistence, Professor. But did Hans Varlberg ever talk about his childhood? About Valadilene and his sister, Anna? No, not that I recall. Pity. When I think of Hans, I'm always reminded of a mysterious mammoth doll he would talk about so often. A small effigy of a mammoth made of hide and mounted with its own miniature mouth. Uh, how come he was so lucky? Why have I not seen this? What would you say about seeing Hans Varlberg again? After all, you could come with me and help me find him. <laughs> Young lady, you are very kind. <laughs> I'm far too old for such escapades. Professor, sorry to disturb you again. Professor, I have brought you something that should be of interest to you. Look. What have you got there, then? Let's see. An effigy of a mammoth. But this is Hans' doll, is it not? Yes, of course it is. How on earth did you... Oh, my God. It's in my hands. It exists. It really exists. Please, please do excuse me. I'm, I'm deeply, deeply moved. You see? Your Hans and my Varlberg heir are one and the same. This is incredible. After all these years, how can I ever thank you, my dear? Oh, I must waste no time. I'm off to my laboratory. I must study this carefully. May I borrow your treasure a moment? Uh, well, actually, 
Uh... Don't worry, miss. I will take the greatest care of it. But I need to study it. You see, it has such importance to me that this very afternoon I shall deliver an impromptu lecture to my students about this very object. If you are interested in Hans Vorlberg, then it is essential that you attend. Hmm? Do you think so? Obviously. Give me your telephone number and I will call you the moment my lecture begins. I will return you your doll at the end. You have my word. to know, miss. You told me earlier about a lecture on some ancient Siberian tribe called the Ooks or something? The Yukals, my dear. Careful not to confuse them with the Ukistran people of Central Asia. Do excuse me. I, I wanted to know if your lecture is going to start soon. Your eagerness to learn delights me, my dear. But I haven't finished studying this marvelous mammoth effigy yet. Don't worry, I will call you. I'll see you later. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. I don't need that for the time being. You have been playing with me, haven't you? You knew very well there were forest sauvignon berries in the station garden. No, not at all. I have never seen your sauvignon things. You don't have to lie to me. I know all about it. You and the rectors are in cahoots, and the professor's lab has been turned into a distillery. You've all got a nice little smuggling racket on the side. 
smuggling racket. Hey, hey, lady, you're going a bit far there. It's just a little on-the-side thing we got going. That's all. It's just for ourselves. Thank you, honest. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Aren't you worried about the reputation of this fine university? The authorities should be informed of this. But we haven't done anything wrong. It's not a crime. Can you open the gate to the garden, please? Oh, sure, sure. No problemo. Right away, miss. Please feel free to visit the garden at your leisure. And uh, uh, there was just one thing. I, I'm not a liar. Not really. Just mum's the word. There is a reputation in the university to think about. And I have superiors and I have to do what I can. I understand. Don't you worry. Oh, thank you, miss. to reach it.
yeah, mi miss, miss, please, uh, excuse me. Yes? You know, I want to apologize for our little misunderstanding. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I brought you a bottle of wine. Barakstadt Sauvignon. Very good year. Let me know what you think. I'm very touched. Thank you. Good luck on your journey, lady. Thank you. Gentlemen, I have managed to repair your university bandstand. The bandstand is playing again. This is marvelous news. We are really very grateful, very grateful indeed. Yes, very grateful indeed. We will look back on your visit with much fondness in our hearts. And now let us in turn honor our word. How much is it you need, miss? A hundred dollars, if it's not too much to ask. Something about it. <clears throat> we agreed to grant you the aforementioned sum, miss. You may now leave with your train.
And while we're on the subject, when will you be leaving? Uh, yes, because now you should relocate your train as quickly as possible. May I call once more upon your generosity? There's still some money I need. What? Hand out money like that without any valid pretext? You are singularly lacking in common sense, miss. You certainly know how to fritter away other people's money, don't you? Your behavior is becoming quite unbecoming. But isn't there some other service I can perform for you? There's nothing we can do for you, young lady. We have no other chores that need doing. We have to watch our university's expenditure. Its resources are not bottomless, you know. And our philanthropy, too, has its limits. My word! Here we are, busy chat-chatting, and look at the clock. It's tea time. Already? My word, doesn't time fly by? Thank you for a charming visit, miss. And thank you, gentlemen. Hey there! On the boat! Guten Tag, schöne Mademoiselle! My husband say, hello, young lady! You want to talk to us? I just met with the university rectors, and they ordered me to remove my train out of their station. I mean, it's a total joke! How do you remove a train that can't move in the first place? You don't have any ideas, do you? We know nothing of train. You up your own creek. Your generosity warms my heart. I hope my train isn't too big for your barge. Tis okay, Motorboat is the class. My husband say correct, powerful motor. I mean, we're not exactly very far from the winding machine, are we? It's dumb, isn't it, all this effort to go a few yards? Put train in barge? Nay, <laughs> not possible. There you go. Here's your money. I've checked it. It's all there. Ah, thank you. Not difficult to get dollar, see? You are a real businesswoman. I'm not the only one around here. We please to do deal with you. Now, you open lock or we no help you. Why didn't you manage to open them? After all, you don't have to be a genius. Ma vor vat pensi no sesto, di kleine madam. No se se ye mar alles non comprendo en allora caput en andere bordel. My husband say, instructions complicated, no understand manual. My husband angry, very angry. Oh, now telephone broke, kaput. Now that is annoying. What are you going to do next? We wait, repairman. Well, I don't have the time to wait. I'll have to go have a look. 
There must be some way of releasing the opening mechanism. Take key. Sailor always need key for lock. Okay, thanks. Right. Now that you've got your hundred dollars, can we take care of my problem? Okay. My inclusive geschlossen. My husband say we help you if you open locks. Yeah, right. Is it the locks that are stopping you from carrying on your journey? Da, barge no pass. Lock closed. Have you tried, like, just opening them? Nah, not possible. Have tried. Now system kaput. Oh, dear. I am sorry about that. Looks like we're all being held prisoners in Barrackstadt then, in a way. Funny that, isn't it? I'll leave you to it. I won't disturb you again. Das Vidania. Hello? Hey, how's my little baby girl? I was thinking about you only yesterday because I saw this fantastic fur coat. You are wrapping up warm, aren't you? I mean, people in foreign countries never know how to dress properly for the weather. Mom, it's so sweet of you to worry, but I'm fine, really. The trip's a breeze, no worries. I mean, there's... Well, when are you coming back? Frank is dying to meet you. Frank? Oh, yeah, you're a singer. You two seeing each other then? Oh, you'll never guess the surprise he gave me yesterday. No, I suppose I won't. Frank invited me to a big charity show organized by, oh, uh, well, someone or another. Uh, anyway, they got him singing a couple of old numbers from his repertoire, and in the end, he asked me to go up on stage with him. Can you imagine me, your mother, on stage in front of thousands of people? Wow, I would have loved to have been there. Not too emotional, I hope. Oh, too emotional by far. Especially as I hadn't even been to the hairdresser. Well, I didn't even have the proper dress on. But Frank promised me he'd see to that next time. Oh, he's such a cutie. And he's got the sweetest little... <laughs> I'm sure he has, Mom. It would be so good if you could join us one day. Let's see, when is his next gala? I'm so forgetful these days. I swear I'd lose my head if it weren't in the clouds. You just watch out, my girl. Them years will catch up with you much quicker than you think. I'll look out for them, Ma. Nice to hear your voice. Lots of love. Well, to you too, my little munchkin. I'm sorry to disturb you. What can I do for you, miss? Can you explain to me how the locks in the canal work, please? A lock, right, is a system of sealed gates. They're clever, right? They help boats overcome gradient problems in channeled water flows. They make this kind of boat staircase, see? You know what I like? Sitting on the bank, watching the barges and... I'm sorry. I must have expressed myself badly. I need to know how the locks open and close, to vary the water levels. I'm not sure on the precise maneuver. Trains and barges, barges, trains, <laughs> those guys are very different fellows altogether. I don't think you've been telling me the entire truth, Mr. Station Master. Now, wait a second, I, I never really intended, you have to believe me. 
I can see I can't pull the wool over your eyes. You're pretty sharp. Or you're just not very good at lying. Oh, I'll never do it again. Promise. I won't disturb you any longer, Mr. Station Master. Welcome to Barrackstadt, Miss. My husband say, hello, young lady. You want to talk to us? Right, I've got it. I know now how the locks work. So guide your boat into the lock, and I'll take care of the mechanism. God verdomme. Das ist eine echte Ladies. Alle toi, range alle Dingen und oblig alles die Dame. Ach, set content und zurück again. What did your husband say? You, hurry up! We hurry to travel again! Okay, okay. We'll meet each other on the other side. By my train, okay?
Hey there! On the boat! Da, da! Barge on other side! You still need us? There! Your barge is over the locks now. It's up to you to keep your part of the bargain. Yes, Belad Frau. Attach loco loco. My husband say, return to train, attach chain, then barge will pull. Okay, I'll get moving. What do we do now to tie my train to the barge? Mademoiselle Takatak, loco coco chain. What did your husband say? You attach chain to train and chain to train with barge. Hop, catch it up. That's going to work. Looks like something's missing. Hello, Kate Walker here. Miss Walker, this is Professor Ponce. I'm about to start my lecture on the Yukon at any moment. Please make haste to come. Okay, I'll give it my best. Excellent. We'll be in the main lecture hall. See you soon. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. You know, I think I would have liked being a student at this university. Everything's just so different here. Yorkshire does feel like another planet. The planet New York? Is that our next stop? Not exactly, Oscar. But I don't think you'd like it there. It doesn't run like clockwork. This guy has. It's simple, but he's obviously a genius. And then there are the mammoths. Funny guy, don't you reckon? I'll have you know Hans Vorlberg is my creator, Kate Walker. Speaking of mechanical problems, there aren't any other hitches I should know about, Oscar? This train has no mechanical problems, Kate Walker. Winding the spring mechanism is standard service procedure. Okay, okay, Oscar. Don't get all touchy about it. I didn't mean it like that. Everybody seems to like the Sauvignon grape here. People and birds. Especially these accursed Amazon cuckoos. It is regrettable that my constitution does not enable me to ingurgitate this product. That's everybody excluding Oscar. Oscar, get ready. I'm going to start winding up the clockwork engine. Good. Kate Walker, then we can carry on our journey. An engineer prides himself.
on punctuality. I know, Oscar, I know. Oscar, couldn't you just try giving me a hand winding the train back up again? My incompetence in this matter will only hinder you, Kate Walker. Always thinking of others, Oscar. I'm off, Oscar. See you later. Yes, Kate Walker. Hello? Where are you? <laughs> Hi, Dan. I'm in Bergstadt. What? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary. If you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? I don't think so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Don't be so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? But my mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. We? If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Your shoes. Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well? Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on this subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it now. Call me back when you've calmed down. I was perfectly calm before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? You can be such a selfish... Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. That's it, Oscar. We can go. Kate Walker, I must remind you of one of the journey regulations. All objects featured in the train's inventory must be replaced before departure. I don't understand. Something is missing, Kate Walker. Oh my god! The mammoth doll! Please return it to its allocated position, Kate Walker. We'll save some time if you help me retrieve everything we need for the train. Very possibly. But such actions are beyond my mandate. You're right. I really should rid myself of the delusion that you are useful to me in some way. You should limit your requests for help to my actual capabilities, Kate Walker. It's just that sometimes you look just so... so... human. I'm off, Oscar. See you later. Yes, Kate Walker. <laughs>